Well, there it is. My Raspberry Pi 2. This is Tom Styles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. Yeah, I know it's not related directly to radios or scanners or shortwave, but I just I, had, I gave in, and I've been wanting to play one of these for quite a while since they first came out a long time ago. So I went ahead and got one, and did a short video on it and was trying to decide whether to make a separate channel or just include it in this channel. Well, the overwhelming response was just include it in this channel. And that's probably a good idea because I don't know how far I'll go with this. So I might only do a half a dozen videos and then throw it in a drawer and never touch it again. But there it is. And today I'm just going to kind of show you my setup quickly. I'm not going to do a introduction or review or anything like that because if you go on YouTube there are hundreds of videos on Raspberry Pis. Be it the original one or the B or the B plus or now the Raspberry 2 there are just hundreds of videos on the Raspberry Pi. And I probably have viewed about a hundred or more already. And I really, really didn't find a lot of detailed information. It seemed like every video was, okay, here's a Raspberry Pi. It's got a port here and a port there. You can get a box for it. Da -da 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 -da. Thank you very much. Bye. And that's all I did. And I've looked at a lot of books, both books um, from the library and ebooks that I got off of Amazon. And again, really haven't found any of the details that I'm looking for because what I'm looking for, and I forgot the name of it already, is software that will run on this Raspberry and control a um, one of those TV dongles which you can turn into a wideband scanner so that I don't tie up a full computer just controlling that um, software, that SDR. So that's what I'm looking for and I found a program that runs on Linux that will do that. It will control that TV dongle and turn it into a scanner. I don't know much about it yet. There doesn't appear to be a lot of details about it on the internet, but I, that's where I'm headed. Where I make it there or not, I don't know. But it's sure it's sure capable of it because it will run the uh, the Raspberry Pi will run versions of Linux, and there's probably a dozen dozen versions out there that it will run, and it has four um, USB ports. So one of them could be used to connect the TV dongle. Right now I'm going to be using um, this right here is, and I don't know if I'm even in the frame here. Yeah, okay, let me back this off a little bit though. I probably haven't been in the frame. But um, this is a, um, a dongle for um, a wireless internet access. And that came in the kit that I bought. Where am I? Gee whiz, am I out of the camera or what? Oh, I, I must have bumped the camera. There we go. Let me go out some more. I am so far out of the camera, it's unbelievable. Okay, now I'm fully zoomed out, and we're going to set this down and maybe move the camera up a little bit. So that's what that is, and then I still have three ports, and right now I am using two ports of the four for the mouse and the, the uh, keyboard, USB mouse and keyboard. Now, one of the things I'm going to try in the near future is I have a wireless USB keyboard and mouse, and that's a little dongle like this. And if that works, then I will only use up one of my four ports instead of two. So we'll see how that works out. So anyway, we're going to hook this up and just show you a few things. Again, 
this is not a tutorial or anything like that. It's just me playing with it. And so I've got, I finally got everything together down in my uh, workshop and we're going to try it, turn it on. So we're going to plug in the keyboard. I say we're going to, whoops, I turned it upside down. No, I had it right. There. Just got to get it lined up. And the mouse. And I just bought, about a week ago, I bought a conversion cable that will plug into this HDMI port and connect to my monitor which has doesn't have an HDMI it has a DVI port and we're going to see if that's going to work so we'll plug that in and the only thing left is to plug in the power cube now the kit I bought came with the case because the the board comes bare normally. It came with this little plastic case. It only took me like two hours to get the board to go in because it had to go in just right because it fits in there perfect. And I did see um, on the Amazon review where somebody said they had to modify the case to get the card to go in. I didn't have to modify it, but it did take me a while to figure out how to get it lined up. So it came with the board, the case, this um, power cube, um, the USB wireless adapter and oh and a, a memory card with the operating systems multiple you can choose what you want installed on it so that's what came with the kit I think the kit was about $65 a little high um, and the, the fact that the uh, Raspberry Pi 2, which just came out in January, uh, is so new, and they, people are charging a premium for them. So instead of the normal $35, which you can still get them $35 if you want to go to some you know other place than Amazon, uh, I think they are $45 just for the card on Amazon. So you're paying $10 extra. But if you got Prime, it's free shipping. So what I do is I got to plug in this power supply. Got to remember which way is up and which way is down. You need to mark these things like top or whatever. And then I've got right now I've got it into this power cube so that I got to switch on it so I can switch it on and off. I've got my monitor on so let's move um, let's move the camera around here and watch me trip over something. So you can see my monitor, or try to see my monitor. This, okay, go back a little bit. I don't know if that's going to be perfect or not. <laughs> I know it's not going to be perfect, but maybe it's at least usable. Okay, I got the monitor turned on. And uh, we're going to see what happens. We're going to turn the power on. And here we go. Uh, nothing so far. Oh, we got a flash. And oh, now, now the um, you probably only see it there for a second, but right now I'm running a booter. Whoops, it's gone. I'm running a booter called Berry Boot, and I use the original um, little memory card that had knobs in OBS. I'm not, don't know if that's the way you pronounce it, which lets you bo um, boot multiple versions of OS, Linux OS based. Um, and, um, and use those different OS's, whichever one you choose to set it up. But I, one of the videos I watched yesterday talked about this Berry Boot, which has Oh, maybe 10 OS's or things that you can run, you can boot the card into. And so I thought, well, that's, you know, a lot more versatile. Plus it has the one that the knobs had or the ones that knobs had. So I thought, I'm going to try that one. So I had another little SD, micro SD card, which is that's what this thing uses, is a micro SD card. 
and it was very easy to install that berry boot and the berry boot comes up and you can choose um, which operating system you want where the other one you have to let it come up in the one that's defaulted and then you have to go change make some changes and tell it to come up with another one this one is much easier and I like this berry boot which is what it's called now, let me see what we what the cameras are showing you Ooh, not a whole lot we uh, I think I'm zoomed completely out nope that's the wrong way oh how did I get zoomed in okay there we go now we're zoomed out and the problem is, is if I zoom out, you're not going to see as much, and whatever. Let's see if we can go down a little bit. Whoops, crank. Go down a little bit to um, get you more heads on. And then we'll come up some. Like I say, I, this is just going to be me playing with my Raspberry Pi. Now, unfortunately, I've got it's the tripod set up so that I can't sit in my chair or move my chair so it'll be close enough. <sighs> what we're gonna do here okay what we can do maybe <laughs> let's see if I got this I already zoomed out Ew, wrong way yep that's all the way so let me rotate the tripod stand by what, I, what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going I'm, when I give a name to these videos, I'm going to use a common title. So that if you're not interested in this at all, you can say, just look at it and go, ah, oh, it's another one of those raspberry waste of time videos. I'm not going to watch it. And you can just skip over it. So I think what I'll do is I'll use um, an acronym like RBP, Raspberry Pi. I'll use that in the title in the very beginning, and so that'll give you a clue as what it's about. And if you're not interested in Raspberry Pi, then you can just say, eh, delete, don't watch that video. So anyway, here we go. So now I got to sit down. So I've got my, okay, come on. i get my chair to move without destroying myself. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I can't see the camera monitor. And so here's, um, this is, I think, I think this is a, fir a version of an OS called Rasp, which is kind of default facto operating system for the Pi. It's the one that's supposedly most compatible and let me reach over here and get the mouse and it comes with uh, a bunch of little features again you know just do a search on uh, Rasbin Raspberry Pi and you'll find some videos that go through all the details which I'm not gonna go through a bunch of details I'm just gonna quickly go through this um, Here's some programming languages. Now, when you're working with this thing, you can program in what I call assembly language, which is a lower level than just using the mouse. You actually have to do a bunch of typing and type commands and stuff like that. And that's available in this version. A couple of different versions. There's one, this is the most common one, the Python. And there's two versions, I'm not sure what the difference in the two versions are. I haven't looked at them. There's another program which is scr called Scratch, and that's a pictorial program language. Again, you can search that, get the details of that. And then there's Sonic Pi. It says, learning, learn programming and computer science while creating music. Yeah, not for me. And then Wolfram, which is uh, I think that has to deal with mathematics. Okay, then you have internet access. You can go to the Pi Store. You can go to the Raspberry Pi resources, or you can just use a simple web browser they have. I'm gonna try that real quick, see if it's working, and see if my little 
Wi-Fi dongle is working. Okay, as you see, I, I, I played with it a few minutes ago, and I went to this famous YouTube channel called Hammerhead88, Tom's Radio Room Show, and sure enough, came up, let me just, uh, pretty, it's pretty uh, fast. Now this is um, supposedly the processor on this new one is four times faster than the other one, the previous one. So it's running at, I think, 900 megahertz. The memory, I think, is twice as large. I think before it was um, 512 megabytes, and this has one gigabyte. And that's it. There's no hard drive or anything like that. One of the other things I'm going to experiment with, and I haven't seen anybody that's done it, is to try to use a USB drive. That, I don't know. I haven't really seen anybody else do that. I don't know why. Maybe I just haven't found it. So anyway, it looks like uh, internet access is there and it's pretty fast. Um, again, uh, this, uh, this particular version is a lot faster and that's kind of what caught my eye in the fact that um, when I had seen the earlier versions, I'm like, boy, these things are really slow and are limited. So I couldn't get too excited. But when I heard about this one, this upgrade, uh, I got kind of excited. So this is just one version of OS, operating system, for this device. And this one, as I said, is supposedly the most compatible. And it's the most Windows-like. Let's close this window. And what else do we have in here? Have games. Pretty simple games. Uh, a big hit, which I'm not into, is Minecraft on the Pi. I'm not into Minecraft, that, that game. Then we got uh, some accessories, a calculator, file manager, image viewer, PDF viewer, hmm. task manager, and so on. Did I set your preferences? Um, I don't know about this monitor, because I haven't tried it, but my other monitor that I initially tried this on, I couldn't get any sound out of the monitor via the HDMI cable. Don't know why, but it didn't work. Let me just... Uh, um, I don't see where I can set the sound control. Again, I'm just experimenting. Uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, I know when you start knobs, which is on my other SD memory card, um, it takes you, initially it takes you into this program called configuration and you set up the configuration. And one of the things you set up is the audio. And you can have the audio either automatically detect whether you've got audio on HDMI or you've got audio via this. Uh, this is the audio port here. Actually, this is a right here. Oh, <laughs> right here. <laughs> the camera's not on it. Oh, what a ditz. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Let me see if I can get down here. Where'd it go? There's the keyboard, there's the mouse. I know it's over there someplace. Yeah, right there, right there. Okay. Uh, we'll try zooming and see if we can keep it in the picture. And then move up a little bit. I definitely need a camera, man. So bad. Okay. So anyway, right here on this version, it's different on the previous version. On this version right here is... Let me get my big fat hand out of the way. Right here is a connector, which is the, I'll call it composite, although it's not composite, but it has audio in, audio out, and video. 
um, older cameras, like I think this camera here that I'm using, um, had that port too, also had that port also, and so that you could take the output of your camera and ride it over to your old TV. So that's the other option on audio is you can bring bring the audio out here. I did that. I have a cable for that because I had it from my camera, and that worked. Um, but I don't know how. I don't think you can in this program, once it's booted, change the audio. I, I, you probably can because uh, I think you can go, I saw a video, and you could go to the control console, a console I'll call it, which now you're in text mode and you can type Linux type commands, and you can get into the configuration program and change the audio port. I'm not going to try to do that right now because I really don't remember how to do it. So anyway, that's, uh, I was, the last thing I want to show you today, all right, the last thing I want to play with, and it happens to be recording, is I'm going to show you this thing booting again. So let's move the camera back over to the screen. And we'll zoom back out. I don't know how well it's showing up. And I've got an option here to shut down, reboot, or log out. I'm going to reboot. Press OK. And that should take me into that Berry Boot Loader program, which then gives me like 10 seconds to choose what OS I want to run of the OS's I have installed. And you can install as many as you want. So here's all the OS's that I've installed. We were running um, Raspin, Pen, Pin, whatever now, uh, and then uh, which I think again is the most compatible. And another one that I played with a little bit when I was playing with Linux is the Pumpy, Puppy Linux. Let's just try that one. Okay, I want to do boot. I don't know if this is showing up on the camera or not. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so now it's going to load that operating system. And like I say, this Berry Boot interface, which which was is much more intuitive than the most popular, which is knobs. So I'm, that's why I'm switching to this one. I still have the the SD card that came with the kit that has knobs on it and a couple of different operating systems that you can load. Okay, here is, I guess, yeah, I guess it's still loading. What did I choose anyway? I think I chose Puppy. No, oh, that's my laptop. Finally booting. I, this old laptop I, I've got that controls my uh, Uniden scanner, it, uh, it's not shutting down properly and it has to do a uh, check disk every time, which takes an hour. Okay, so here is all the things that you can do with this baby. Got a bunch of utilities for backing up and stuff like that. Graphics, playing with your graphics card, playing with a digital camera. They have a digital camera. There's a uh, connector in here that's made for a specific digital camera and it's a little digital camera on a card and uh, there's some things you can do with that uh, one thing you can do somebody wrote a little program that will give you the capability of using time-lapse photography using that video camera that sounds interesting and then we got documents. Here's a PDF viewer converter business. We've got a calculator, a couple of calculators, personal information, network, internet. Has a version of Chromium, 
which is similar but not real similar to Chrome and then a bunch of other things. Multimedia, things, a bunch of things you can do with multimedia. Fun, jigsaw puzzle and a Rubik's Cube and then shutdown and up here we have uh, things you can do with the desktop, system things, format, floppy drive, floppy drive. Hmm. I won't be doing that on this thing. And let's see if, uh, oh, okay. If I right click on the screen anywhere, I get that menu. Don't, uh, let me go back to settings. Where would settings be? Under utility, general utilities, setup. There's setup. ALSA Sound Wizard. Hmm. I wonder if that will do what I want it to do. Welcome to South Bay. Okay. Often non-working sound is just a matter of unmuting and or bringing up the level in the audio mixer. Click this button to run the mixer. Okay, what the heck? Let me see if we can get the sound turned on. Now, wait a minute. Um... I don't think I have any sound control on this monitor. Heavens only knows. I don't know. Excuse me. Showing my backside here. Color. I don't know. We don't want that. Okay, how do I get out of that? How do I get out of the menu? Oh, I just turned it off. That's one way to get out of the menu is turn it off, turn the monitor off. There we go. Okay. Uh, brightness. Yep. Oh, I bet you that um, that one button I'm hitting is not power. It's it's the switch between analog and digital. That's what that button is. I don't see any audio menu. I have to do some research. I was, I think I mentioned this in one of my previous videos. He is, I got this monitor from a guy that does computer repairs. And he says, it's pretty flaky. It'll run for a while, and then it shuts off, and it's, you know, kind of intermittent how long it runs. Well, when I was cleaning it, I found that um, some of the protective plastic was still on the vent ports on the back. I took that off, and it's been working ever since. So, um, so I don't think there's any... Uh, I don't think I'm going to get any audio out of this monitor. It's not muted according to this. Okay, yeah, I'm going to, okay, so much for that. So I guess I'm going to have to go with the setup I had when I was upstairs, which is to port this audio actually. Yeah, hold on a second. I'm going to waste some more time here. Again, I'm just kind of just playing with this. I actually have a little amplifier microphone. Oh, so, oh, I don't have the right connector. So, here he is. Let me over here. Here is the cable. It has four bands on here and it plugs into that port. And it gives you three outputs and I guess a ground, whatever. Um, there's two audio and a video. So that's the connector cable you need to use that port. Luckily I have one, but my little amplifier here has a different connector, so I can't use that today. So we're going to have to find some other cables to use with uh, the card. Okay. So that's um, Puppy, again another form of Linux, and we're going to shut this down. We want to reboot, and I'm going to show you one more, and that's it, if there's anybody still watching. <laughs> oh boy, okay. Oh, you may have may have briefly seen up in the corner 
four raspberries. That's because this is a quad core computer. If it was a single core, you'd only see one raspberry. So the number of cores is indicated by how many raspberries shows up in the corner. I don't know if it was on the screen or not, and the thing's already be rebooted.